Welcome back to K24 Alpha GV. It's now time to get bold and beautiful. And today I'm joined by a set of fashionpreneurs. Fashionpreneurs. And uh, joining me uh, on the set is uh, Sheila Karanja, Karibu Sana to K24 Alpha GV. And then we have uh, Joseph Bantu. Welcome to K24 Alpha GV. And of course, lastly, we have Kenneth Pop. Yes. Welcome. <laughs> Pop is your name? Uh, it's my alias. It's, it's my brand name, actually. Okay. Yes. But why Pop? Why, why not? Jamie or Fox uh, or <laughs> yeah, actually most people think I'm Muslim, mm -hmm. but I'm Catholic. Oh, you are. So yes, so my middle name is uh, Benedict. So the current Pope is oh, called. Benedict. Oh, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. Smart. <laughs> You're smart. <laughs> You're very smart. Okay, so kindly just introduce yourself to our viewers back at home. Let me start with Sheila. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ladies first, right? My name is Sheila yes. Karanja. Um, I am founder of Zamari. Yes, I'm a wife, a mother, mm -hmm. a daughter, a sister. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Joseph? Um, I'm Joseph Bantu, mm -hmm. the founder of the Bantu as a brand. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, she said she's a mother, a wife. Mm -hmm. I'm a son. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a son. Um, All right. Yeah, the business person. Okay. Yeah. Yes, my name is Ken Pop. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm the founder director for the Undisputed Luxury Brands, mm -hmm. which has two signature brands under it. Mm -hmm. So they are, we have the Undisputed Woman and the Undisputed Man, which mm -hmm. focuses on talent making bespoke suits for both men and me women. Yes. Yes. Wow. You know, I just feel like I'm seated in a powerful, <laughs> you know, panel. Thank you so much for taking time to be here with us today. Yes. And all of you are in the fashion industry. I just like to n know your journey. Like, wh how did you start? Where did you start from, Sheila? Yes. <laughs> Um, so I cleared campus, I worked for a year, and it wasn't working for me. Mm -hmm. So I tried a couple of things yeah. just to see because I ruled out employment. Mm -hmm. So while I was still employed, I, f I tried, because I'm very good with my hands. Mm -hmm. So I tried to figure out what I could do mm -hmm. creatively. I'm in the creative space mm -hmm. to, you know, make a living and enjoy mm -hmm. what I do. And so I borrowed a machine from my friend. Mm -hmm. Um, so that I just don't, I don't buy one and then three months later I'm like, okay, yeah, maybe like, not. No, this is not <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah, so I taught myself. Mm -hmm. um, I went to school shortly after. Mm -hmm. I quit. Um, and then, yeah, I decided to open my own thing and okay. I did. Yeah. So you cleared, um, which year again? 2015. 2015. And what did you do? Communications. Communications. And yeah. now you're in the fashion industry. Yes. Wow. Okay. Joseph? Personally, I wasn't into the fashion industry as mm -hmm. much, but once I cleared high school, not university, mm -hmm. I didn't have anything to do. That was back mm -hmm. in 2012. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to figure out where I fit in, what mm -hmm. I can do. So a friend of mine took me in. He used to sell suits. It's called Cool Suits. Mm -hmm. So he started out as a salesperson <coughs> in his shop. I would open the shop, work the whole day, mm -hmm. close, do the books and all that. So as I walked through it, I learned uh, the tricks, where I needed to go, who I needed to talk to. Mm -hmm. So my first venture was basically a suit business, mm -hmm. where I did uh, suits for almost a year. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, having come just from high school, I needed also to figure out what I want to go and do mm -hmm. in school. Mm -hmm. So I enrolled in Strathmore, however, I didn't finish my course. Mm -hmm. In the process of doing my course, I realized people associated me with fashion more than yeah. what I was doing yeah. in school. Yeah. So I decided, let me go full-time fashion. Mm -hmm. But my parents were against it, so they also of took course. me back to school. This time they told me they, I had to do what I would get because what I chose, I didn't yeah. go the whole way with yeah. it. So I ended up doing uh, metrology, which is the study of weather. Wow. However, as you can weather, see... Weather, fashion, <laughs> no, it's, this is black and I'm white. There, yeah. Mm. So I got into a group where I would showcase at shows, do small things here and there as mm -hmm. I tried and figured out where I really mm -hmm. would fit in the market. Mm -hmm. But I will say in 2016 is where I really put my foot down and decided I'm doing fashion mm -hmm. and this is where I stick. Okay. Yeah. And you've just mentioned that your parents weren't very happy with you, you know, um, going into the fashion industry. Are they supportive of you right now that you're very successful? <laughs> yes, they are. Funny <laughs> enough, okay, I figured, let me just do it and give them a reason to believe in me. Absolutely. Because if I said, let me just sit back and do what I don't like, mm. I'll be in a field where I wouldn't feel comfortable mm. and mm. I wouldn't be giving it my best. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and finally, the Pope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, 
Uh, funny enough, people think I've actually, I've actually done fashion and design in school, mm -hmm. but uh, I also went to Strathmore. Mm -hmm. uh, this wow. Was, this, this was way uh, 2009, 2008, mm -hmm. where I did the uh, diploma in mm -hmm. IT. Uh, for, for two years, then I went to Nairobi University where I did BCom mm -hmm. for four years. Wow. So in 2010, where I joined Nairobi University, that's when I started doing uh, those sales activations, those promos. Mm -hmm. So I worked mm -hmm. with Coke, first of all, I worked with some other companies just to start with. And it was at that, let me say, entry level. So I didn't know what I was doing actually at the moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I just needed to make money. Mm -hmm. So slowly but slowly, so I, uh, the modeling thing had, had to come, uh, the, the fashion runway had to come, was coming actually mm -hmm. very quite fast in 2012, 2011, mm -hmm. thereabout. Mm -hmm. So that's when I joined uh, commercial modeling. That's the, the, mm -hmm. the, the runway modeling and everything else. So I did it for about two, three years. Mm -hmm. But I could see the niche where people weren't dressing as per what I expected. Mm -hmm. So you have international brands like Tom Ford, mm -hmm. you have guys mm -hmm. like Akina, Christian uh, Louboutin, so many guys, but you don't have like an authentic brand which pre present luxury or something in Kenya. Absolutely. So, started, so I said, let me just come up with something that, you know, that people may, will appreciate and everything. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's when I started the undisputed uh, luxury brands. Mm -hmm. This was in 2016. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can say it has been rough and tough. Mm -hmm. Given that even the folks weren't, you know, accepting this. Absolutely. But the good thing is that. So uh, even yours were not accepting you. To go no into one this. actually. Yeah. I mean, wow. it's a hard thing because they see, they, they see you get into the fashion industry. Mm. That they need to understand how do you make money out of this. So, but you have the vision, everything else, and plus mm. the passion. So I can, I can just hear my mom here like, yo, <laughs> I have paid money for you to go and do this, and then unengi <laughs> How is that even happening? Uh, yeah. Exactly. So as the three of you speak, it's kind of like. Um, uh, getting into this kind of an industry was a plan B for you because things never worked out the way you wanted them to. Do you regret actually getting into this in, in, like, industry because it's very competitive? Uh, for me, what I, what I can say is that I, first of all, I was working in a corporate job mm. before all this. So I joined a corporate job in 2014. Where? Uh, I was working with Caltex. Oh, okay. Yes, I was there as a senior marketing coordinator for the, for the East Africa. Mm. So I, I worked there. Uh, in my second year, that's when I thought, let me start something which, you know, which can actually help me, mm. like a side hustle kind of thing. Mm. Mm. And, and probably by the time, after three years or something, I can mm. actually see where I'm at mm -hmm. to see if I need to review my business or not. Mm -hmm. So I actually quit my job last year, my full-time gig. Wow. So last year, October, then, so that's when I, uh, I went all in in fashion. I can mm -hmm. say it has been mm -hmm. very, very, it was a very good decision that I made. Mm -hmm. yes. Sheila, do you have any yes. regrets? Oh, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> first of all, it's, easier when you enjoy what you do. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's not easier to tough, but it's, mm. it's easier to tough out mm -hmm. the tough times mm. as opposed to when, you're when I was employed, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd drag myself out of bed every, mm. like it was such a chore to go to work. About Monday, like, oh I know, <laughs> so of course, t times are tough. Mm. Um, there are times that it gets tough. Mm. But when you know where you want to be, mm -hmm. it sort of helps mm -hmm. you, you know, tough it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Joseph? Um, I would say my biggest regret is not starting this earlier. Because I wish I had the exposure when I needed it most. Because I can say I lost like two years figuring out what I want to do, where I want to be at. But if it comes to the fashion industry, mm -hmm. I have no regrets because it's something I love doing. Mm -hmm. It's something I wake up to every day and I'm happy about it. Mm -hmm. I can't say I go to bed thinking tomorrow's Monday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I know tomorrow's Monday, I'm like, tomorrow I have a day I'm going to make money. And the mm -hmm. good thing about mm -hmm. entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. it's about your own personal drive. Because mm -hmm. if you wake up in the morning and you say, I want to go to work, mm -hmm. you don't get a paycheck at the end Absolutely. of the month. Absolutely. So it's something. <laughs> gives you the drive, yeah. there's something you're working towards, mm -hmm. rather than working for someone where you're working towards someone else's goal, not yeah. your own goal. Yeah. yeah, and it is something that you love to do every single day. Yes, it is. All right, so, you know, um, a lot of people watching the show and they like to get into the fashion industry, they're actually wondering, okay, fine, you know, maybe you come from backgrounds where, you know, like your parents were wealthy and they give you some cash to start a business. Um, where did you get the cash from to start this kind of business? Because I'm sure it's very expensive, you know, buying all those, the machines, you know, getting us paid, Getting my fabric is very expensive because I've had conversations with uh, designers here, and, and the one thing that always comes out is like fabric, 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 fabric. So where um, did you get the funding from? Uh, mine actually it was very hard because mm. uh, I remember this was in 2015 around November there. That's when I started the, the whole uh, clothing line, mm. but launched official in 2016. Mm. But that time. Um, 
Um, I used to run this idea through my friends and also my, my, you know, my family and relatives. Mm. Did they think you were crazy? They thought I was very crazy yeah. because, you know, you, you, you from doing procurement in the European University for three years, you, you, you have a second class partner. Yeah. And, and then here you are. Doing something different. So yeah. I, I, it doesn't add out. Mm. So, mm. so I thought, let me just, that, that's when I actually thought of going to corporate. Mm. Like in, let, let me get, because at least I had the papers. Mm. So I, I looked for a job. That's when I got the... Um, uh, the, the, I mean, the position at uh, mm -hmm. that, that oil company. Mm -hmm. So it took me about, um, let's say, about one and a half years to do my funding. Mm -hmm. It was all, 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 it was all self-funding actually. Mm -hmm. So that was my salary, my savings, and everything mm -hmm. else. Because mm -hmm. I understand, especially in the, beginning of the suit business, mm -hmm. the fabrics that you get are very expensive. Absolutely. Even the sum that you yeah. also import. Yeah. So and you know you cannot like import like bulk orders. Mm -hmm. It is we normally do on other basis. So. Mm -hmm. Thank God, at least we had local suppliers who can actually mm -hmm. su supply what, what we need at well, whenever time. Mm -hmm. So for the I can say for the first well, one, it was very hard because mm -hmm. you're there paying rent, you're there paying people, mm -hmm. you're there paying your staff as well. In so my own pocket without, you and, know, and the funny part is that the you, profits, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. and you're only paying yourself. Mm -hmm. So it was very hard for me. But okay. I can say it, it was through my, my employment that I actually got to save a lot of things. Okay. Yes. Sheila, yes. Um, how did you get your funding? <laughs> <laughs> my family. Um, so my mom was very supportive. My dad was like, Una shona. <laughs> <laughs> so he was not having yeah. any of that. But my mom was very supportive. Um, mm. She gave me my initial seed capital, mm. my sisters as well. I think to date, even when I need mm. um, money for that I can't, that I don't have, mm -hmm. my sisters are always um, available, so mm. I can call. Mm. Give me, but mm. please. Yvonne, if you can just forgive my loan for now. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can always call and, you know, I need this money, please mm. give me. And then when, you know, when this mm. order is done, mm. I'll pay you back. So my, mm. my husband has been very supportive as mm -hmm. well. Mm. Um, I should mention that I took a break, actually, when mm. I got my first child. And the hours also are very crazy in mm. fashion. Um, so there are days you leave early in the morning. I used to go back home at 10, 11, you know, depending on... Mm -hmm in the season. So after I got my child, I took a break. I was mm -hmm. like, let me figure this mm -hmm. child out mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. um, so I took a break. And I think that's what I was telling you I, um, before we started, that when I got the call from Foyer, I laughed mm -hmm. because I had <laughs> just relaunched. So I had figured out this mothering business. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, now let me go back to what I love, what I do, you know, so that I, I'm also not forgetting myself mm -hmm. in being a mother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I had just relaunched my business and then I got the call. Mm. So my husband in my relaunch was very supportive. Mm. Um, and my sisters, my parents, my family basically has okay. been very supportive. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Joseph. Personally, I'll say it's been difficult, difficult. Mm. Uh, mm. Personally, my parents didn't mm. want me to go into fashion mm -hmm. because they believe you have to study, get a job, work mm -hmm. an eight to five. Mm -hmm. So once I dropped out of Strathmore, uh, I had to go back to the suit guy. Mm. So he told me, I'll take you back, but this time on a commission basis. Mm. <coughs> so I had to work on commissions. I had to make sales. I had to save up. I had to uh, cater for myself because you mm. can't wake up in the morning and ask for money mm. to go and do something which someone else is against. Mm. So I can't go and ask, can I get some transport to go and sell mm. clothes? It doesn't make sense when mm. the same person wants you to go back to school. Mm -hmm. So I had to really work hard, try and save here and there. Sometimes I eat into all of my savings, and mm. then I started all over <laughs> again. And then I got to a point where I found out how I could save the money mm. by investing it somewhere else and mm. then using it back into the business. Mm -hmm. So with time, I grew, I made some more money, and then I guess at some point, my mm. mom saw, eh, there's something here. Uh, yes. I have to help this kid out. <laughs> so I wouldn't say she helped me out by giving me a handout. Mm. She helped me out by giving me jobs. So she will mm. get me jobs that will really stress me out, but at the end of the day, I will get a good paycheck mm. and it will aid in my mm. business. Mm. So time I've grown. Uh, right now, I have a sponsor who's really plugging in into the business, mm -hmm. someone who believed in my vision, someone mm -hmm. who came in when I was struggling and told me, let me give you a year and see how mm -hmm. you'll work, how things will be. Mm -hmm. And then if it's really worth it, I'll plug in. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm really happy, like... I had that beginning because if I had a soft beginning, I wouldn't have known uh, how it feels to work hard, Absolutely. how it feels to work for money. Because sometimes yeah. when you get a handout, you don't know how to manage it. You don't yeah. know how to grow it. And yeah. You don't know how to work around yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of which, this is why it's important even for people to go to school for the same thing. Because people don't even think that uh, for designers, like you need to go to school. 
And um, just by the way you have become very successful, that means that you, you have mastered the art and the tricks of the industry. But there's always one question that pops up every single time when we talk about um, Kenyan designers is the pricing. Because people are thinking, okay, fine, we're so happy to have our very own made in Kenya for Kenyans. But then again, we cannot afford these outfits. Sheila, what determines the pricing of your outfits? I think first of all, I'd just like to say also about the funding. Yeah. It's okay to grow organically. Mm. Um, it's okay to have one um, one client and from that, you know, have two more or, you know, mm. it's fine. You don't have to start with a lump sum. Mm. Mm. Um, and I think that's how I grew. I, for, mo for the most part, ex apart from my seed capital, mm. I grew organically. Mm. It's slow, but it's sure. Mm. And it will work out in the end. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, what was your question? The question was the pricing. Or the what pricing. Is that, yeah. um, you know what? You just have to... If you like my work, you will buy it. Mm -hmm. Because the truth is, Kenyans will say we are expensive, but they'll spend much more on perfumes or mm -hmm. if other um, external brands, I mean mm -hmm. brands that are outside Kenya, outside mm -hmm. Africa, mm -hmm. you know. So the truth is, if you value something, mm -hmm. you will get it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's important. I think for me, I've, I figured out, okay, this is my price point. So yeah. you either take it or leave it. <laughs> take it or leave it. Yeah. I love the attitude. <laughs> All right, Pop. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I'd say it, it depends on the kind of workmanship that you get mm -hmm. as a customer. Because mm -hmm. uh, first of all, uh, clients like us for, for, uh, you know, for samples. Let me see what, mm -hmm. what you've done. Mm -hmm. you know, of course, you need to show them the, you know, like a social media pages. Mm -hmm. But they, they need to see more than that. So what mm -hmm. happens is that uh, you come at least with two pieces of work that you've done. Mm -hmm. See what they actually buy into. Mm. and uh, you can actually decide if it's expensive or not. Mm -hmm. But usually it's normally dependent on uh, like three factors, I would say, for the end. Mm -hmm. So that's the choice of style, design, or fabric. The fabric, Especially yeah. in the suiting business, because you can sell suits as uh, low as 10,000, mm -hmm. to as high even as 250,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So it depends, on, it depends on how the client looks at you. Mm -hmm. But for me, I'd say it's all about the workmanship that comes along. Okay. Yeah. All right. Joseph? Personally, I would say pricing comes with skill. Mm. Um, Pope's brand is one of the brands I've benchmarked on for a very long time. He doesn't know that, <laughs> but he sells now he knows. luxury products. Mm. So uh, it got me thinking, if you want to buy something you can live without, mm. why aren't you ready to part with something mm. to pay for the luxury you want? Mm. Because let's say he's selling a suit. I'm selling a jacket and all that. If you want to wear my jacket, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean you can't wear a sweater, but you want the jacket. If you want the jacket, you have to be ready to pay for the skill, the time, mm -hmm. and everything I've put into it. Mm -hmm. um, people come and want to get, uh, let me say quality, mm -hmm. but they don't want to part with the price of the quality. Mm -hmm. So if you're coming to me and you want to buy something that's uh, mm -hmm. pricey, mm -hmm. I can't negotiate with you to give you a lower price mm -hmm. for the same product mm -hmm. and I'd rather just tell you the truth and tell you whatever you want for the pricing you want I can deliver mm -hmm. rather than promise you to deliver and use a low quality material fabric Absolutely. And then I lose a client just because I compromised yeah. on my price yeah. just mm -hmm. to make you happy yeah. so yeah. just tell people if you're ready to buy this you have to buy it at the price that mm -hmm. I stated at okay. and it's not that we are you're quoting crazy prices mm -hmm. because if you check our prices and the prices of the brands which people buy mm. because they think they're buying the brand mm -hmm. however they buy mm -hmm. the brand because mm -hmm. it's not the original mm. piece they're getting knockoffs but the price at which they're buying the knockoffs is almost That's the same, same. Absolutely. as the price at which Absolutely. you're selling our own original mm. pieces so i won't be wrong to say that your target market is middle upper class yes. onwards yeah Okay, sour, sour. And the three of you have been nominated uh, um, uh, for the Founder of the Year Awards, which goes by initials for you. Uh, Sheila, the yes. only lady. And <laughs> then we have these two great gentlemen. What does this nomination mean to you in, like individually, Sheila? Uh, for me, because it came so shortly after my relaunch, mm. it was just a confirmation that, mm. you know what, you did the right thing. Yeah. Um, you're, in, you're on the right path. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like a child <laughs> <laughs> in between these two gentlemen. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but for me, it was a confirmation that you're on the right path. Mm -hmm. Slowly by slowly, you know, one step at a time, you'll get where you want to be. Okay. And Pop, you've yeah. been in the industry for quite a long time, you know. Yes. Uh, and people know you and you've been nominated a couple of times. Uh, is this just an assurance that you are <laughs> truly doing what you're meant to be doing? Uh, the good thing is that I at least I appreciate the fact that people see the kind of work you're doing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and far enough, especially when it comes from your side, you know, it's hard for you to see what people uh, mm -hmm. people feel, people mm -hmm. in terms of the market mm -hmm. feedback, it's very hard. Mm -hmm. So. This is one of the ways that you actually see that you're actually doing something to market and, mm -hmm. and you have a lot of supporters, you have a lot of guys who are coming for you, yeah. getting for you for whatever mm -hmm. you do. Yeah. And it feels very, very, very refreshing actually. Okay. Yes. Joseph, what does this mean to you? Personally, I remember seeing the invitation to apply for the nomination. Mm -hmm. A friend sent it to me and then I looked at it for a while, mm -hmm. then I called my friend and told her, okay, you've sent me this nomination where I can apply for a nomination, mm -hmm. but really should i apply for myself because <laughs> it's like i'm blowing my own trumpet, own trumpet so yeah. i told her i won't apply so she just sat and said let, let it go because mm -hmm. i can't apply to compete for something yeah. that's supposed to be awarding people mm -hmm. who other people mm -hmm. think deserve mm -hmm. it so i just sat and then i just received a call and i was told hey bant you've been nominated for this and mm -hmm. this and i was like mm -hmm. okay oh my God. who did this mm -hmm. and then i called her up and was like are you the one who who signed me up and she's mm. like, no, you told me not to sign up, so I never signed up. Mm. So I was wondering who did this because mm. the only people I had a conversation with on the same mm -hmm. told me they never did it because I told them not to because mm. I didn't want someone to do it because you're my family, you're my friend. Mm. I wanted someone to do it because they love what I do. Yeah. Mm. So seeing the nomination, I was like, okay, now it's real. So I just waited and said, let me see who, who I'm in the same group win mm -hmm. and then okay i didn't know i didn't know sheila before this but i've also done some research on her because mm -hmm. yeah we're in the same mm -hmm. but when i saw pope i was like who's ranking me Whoa. on the same level as Whoa. Pope? Mm -hmm. i couldn't believe it like i was calling people and i'm like have you seen wh where i'm being placed like i don't i don't believe uh, where i am right now because mm -hmm. at some point as a designer you get uh, to places where you wish you could just give it up like yeah. Yeah. just say mm -hmm. i've got that yeah. And then when you get things like this, it just motivates you and tells you, even if you had a setback a few days ago or mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. there's up. a reason why you should mm -hmm. push on. Mm -hmm. Like, So getting this nomination has been like that push I needed to tell me, hey, mm -hmm. don't give up, continue, continue. Because sometimes it seems as if it's all green, it's all roses mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. But you know, person who knows where they the should struggles mm -hmm. are is pressing. Yeah. So it's, it was more of a push, more of something I didn't expect. But mm -hmm. I'm really glad it's here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so of course, we'd like the Alpha Jury family to vote for you. I don't know how we can vote for you. Maybe, Sheila, you can just give us your codes on how we can vote and where we can vote. Sure, you can go on the founder.co.ke mm -hmm. and you'll get the list of nominees mm -hmm. and then you can vote. Mm okay, yes, yes. So there are no codes, you just vote no, for the yes, category. Yes, just vote for. Okay, yeah. all the best to you. Thank and you. Uh, the ceremony, the gala night is on Friday, yes? Friday, yes. Friday. On Friday 29th. Yes. So all the best to you. May the best yeah. person win. So I'll be I'll be coming definitely. Oh. So I'll see you there. <laughs> so, so, uh, okay. Thank you very much for coming through to, for, uh, to K24 Alpha Jury. We're so happy to have you. And uh, that's it for Bold and Beautiful. We shall now take a short commercial break. When we come back, it's time to talk matters soccer. Russia, do not go anywhere.